السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. عليكم السلام أمين. Every episode I'm like السلام عليكم and then I'm like okay do I say am I addressing Muhammad or am I addressing the listeners? <laughs> Uh, I'm, it, I'm, it, I think I'm saying wa alaykum assalam for myself and the listeners. Okay, thanks. <laughs> is there background noise? I, I can. I, I think I'm picking up background noise, but I can't tell what it is. On your side? Yeah. Uh, I can't hear. I can't hear it. That's fine. Seems okay. Bro, let me ask you a question, yeah? Yeah. Do you feel ready for death? Oh boy, am I ready? <laughs> Oh, subhanAllah. Do you know what? I always mm. make dua that Allah takes me when he's when he's pleased with me. Yes. Yes. And um I don't know if it's I don't know if it's the right thing giving my life like giving events in my life purpose. Okay. I don't know if I don't know if everything that happens in my life has purpose or if I've just trained myself to think that. You know? Mm. For example, like everything happens for a reason. I don't know if that's always the case. Like this grand reason or it's guiding me to some you know, or or if I'm just making my life a bit more sensational than it actually is, you know. Mm. So because of that, I have this. I don't know. I've got this strong faith that I'd only die if if Allah's pleased with me because I made du'a for that many many mm. times. Trust you know? yeah. Mm. Um, and I'd like to think that if that happened, you know, if I was going to die, then then I'd be ready for it. Mm. Some I don't know if it's quite dark. I don't know if it's because I'm in such a uh, melancholy mood lately. But whether looking forward to that kind of uh, not it's, it's sad, isn't it? Saying I'm looking forward to death. I'm not looking forward to death because there's a lot to to live for. But um, I think it's for some. It's like looking forward to meeting Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala or looking forward to exactly. just kind of getting the process going you know I don't <laughs> get know on you... with this gender thing man come on <laughs> <laughs> do you know what I mean I don't know if you, I mean I'm sure you've sat a test that's just taken way too long mm. you know you've and you kind of test... just want the result yeah mm. yeah this not is to the say that I've mightiest of tests yeah it's not to say that I've you know I've done amazing I really haven't mm. but I think my at least my husn al mm. has Often overtaken my sense of fear for for death. Yeah, and that's you know? that I think seems like that's how it should be. When you read like some of the explanations of the hadith around, uh, you know, having a good opinion of Allah and expecting the best from Allah, you kind mm. of get that sense that it's almost becomes. I remember when I, you know, because when I discovered this hadith, it really fascinated me. It really was a paradigm shifting hadith for me. So I was reading into it, you know, a few years ago. And and when you read the explanations, you just start to feel like, like, yeah, like literally it's that simple. If I believe Allah will have mercy on me, then Allah will have mercy on me. You know what I mean? Hmm. I um, Last night I was listening to, you know, I had my, I had the YouTube just on autoplay. Hmm. Um, so I'm not 100 percent sure who the speaker was, but I, I managed to catch wind of something that they were talking about. They were talking about Jibril alayhi salam mm. and um, how his uh, one cool fact was how like il the 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 end the word il okay. uh, apparently unanimously through the scholars agree that that means Allah. So that's why you have Jibrail and Mikail and Israfil. You have mm. this constant il on the end, mm. um, and then Jibra. I think they said that means Abd. Allah alam how authentic mm. that is, but Jabara means I think to force something. I don't know if it means in the in the language that whatever. I don't know if it's like an alternative language because okay. il itself isn't necessarily what we'd say Allah is, but apparently true, in this true. context it is. Do you know what mm. I mean? So it could mm. be either way. So um, just talking about Allah's mercy. Um, so it was talking about how Jibrail has basically constantly been with all the prophets and it always been involved in some way in terms of se- se- delivering the message right yes um, and he mentioned about Fir'aun and how Fir'aun how Jibreel said regarding how you should have seen how Fir'aun died kind of thing mm. and he said that he found Fir'aun at the bottom of the ocean or you know washed up or whatever and 
he he kicked dirt in his mouth mm. because he was fearful that he would say the kalima, mm. so he would say the shahada, and yeah. Allah might forgive him. Yeah, and that that was so powerful, bro. Mm. Because when you really think about it, yeah, because to that extent that Jibrail, knowing Allah more than we do, mm. um, had this fear, and yeah. Allah, 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 how authentic this is, I'm not, I'm not sure myself, but if it is. Um, having this fear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may forgive even Fir'aun mm. and, and, he, and he, it's almost like a panic that he had to kick yeah. dirt in his mouth to stop yeah. that from happening yeah. Yeah. Um, and only Allah allowed him to do so mm. you know because only Allah only allows Allah you know what I mean Allah is is is, is anything that happens is things. only by yeah. permission of Allah yeah exactly exactly yeah and uh, when when you add like the powerful thing about this is the context of Jibra'il knowing Allah, you know, mm. better than us, you know, mm. um, that gives you, you know, a, a, a peek into really yani Allah's mercy, you know, like how... Of course. Mad it is. And it's easy, I suppose it's easy to get intoxicated on that thought. Mm-hmm. It's easy to, to get drunk on hope and to forget your obligations, forget mm. what's really required of you. And... Mm. I don't know sometimes I think depending on who you are and how you practice your religion sometimes we do get a bit caught up on rules and regs um, on the halal and haram um, like uh, the deen becomes a set of rules as opposed to a a, a way of life or, or, mm. or a deen or, <laughs> and yeah a deen or emphasis on faith itself you know um, especially when you're practicing but like you're I don't know if you, you say you have low iman like there's people that have low iman, but they still carry on. You know, they still do all of their obligations. Yeah. And then what happens is it becomes a rule game as opposed to faith, as opposed to a deen, as opposed mm. to this trying high, to please Allah, trying to please Allah, or being conscious of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And I think I've, I'm guilty of that quite a lot. Mm. I think when my iman's low, I'm mm. still doing everything that I should do. Yeah. But I'm not doing them for the reasons of pleasing Allah yeah. or being conscious of Allah. I'm not actually being that conscious of Allah. I'm just doing them because yeah. it's kind of ritualistic. Yeah, I know what you mean. And th- th- mm. I think I'm like that as well. Like, because Alhamdulillah, I grew up like always praying and stuff. Mm. Um, maybe not necessarily like always on time and all of that and the masjid and all of that, but always mm. praying. Alhamdulillah. And of course, uh, the, there's times when your heart's not in it. I think that's the right way of saying it. Your heart's not in it. And you're doing it because this is a habit, you know, mm. and this is something that, yeah, you you, you kind of have, um, you've decided for yourself that you will be doing this every day for the rest of mm. your life. But, yeah, you're not always doing it because, look, um, I'm, I'm a, you know, I should be a grateful slave of Allah and I want to please Allah and, and Allah is deserving of this praise uh, by mm. me praying. I mean, yeah, but... You know what it is, bro? The, the mercy of Allah and the mercy in, in Islam is that even the person who sinks, whose iman sinks to the level of just the obligations, that Allah should enter him into Jannah. You know, Allah will enter him into Jannah, mm. inshallah. That's, mm, the, that's the great part about it. And of course, you know, we balance, we balance this hope with, with uh, the relevant fear and the appropriate level of fear and the appropriate level of just, you know, feeling like you're not quite where you should be, you know, rel- relative to Allah's blessings on us, you know, we're not where we should be, you know. So you balance those two out. But of course, I think, you know, it's quite clear that we do lean towards the hope a little bit, you know, maybe 60 mm. 40. I think this is why it's so, sort of important to have this notion of seclusion, um, whether that's active seclusion, like you deliberately separate yourself from people, or whether you can't help it, like, for myself, uh, seclusion or you know isolation from the rest of the Muslims is quite common because I'm not surrounded by many, and I mm-hmm. haven't. My lifestyle hasn't really allowed me to be even close to the Muslims that are here in in my city, which yeah. is really unfortunate. Um, mm-hmm. But that is the reality, and because of that, I only have myself to compare myself to. Mm-hmm. Like I, I can't. I'm not always surrounded by people that are worse than me mm-hmm. in terms islamically speaking and I say worse in quotations but from what's apparent you know openly mm-hmm. sinning and and things like this um and I'm not necessarily surrounded with people that that I would say are basically I just haven't got muslims around me so yeah um 
and because of that it's it's uh i suppose easier for me to judge myself with myself so i can say that i'm I, i'm not falling into a trap where oh look they're better i'm better than them so mm-hmm. i'll be fine like allah's mercy will will mm. shower me it's fine mm. um, you're kind of competing with yourself exactly um yeah. and i know you know i think if you look at yourself deeply you know what your highs are and your highs might be someone's norms you know yeah yeah that's and that's something i've noticed it's like you know i remember bro like me going to the masjid for it for every prayer is mm. like wow look what i've achieved but mm. for someone else that's daily that's normal you know mm, mm. um and uh, but I'll, i've always i've always had this hope that Allah judges pers- uh, judges a person on the capacity that they have, as opposed to someone uh, judging them, comparing them to someone else. Mm, you yeah. know. So, for example, one person attending the masjid for one prayer, yeah. and I'm not saying in, a, in an area where it's, I'm saying in a situation where it's not necessarily an obligation on them because of the distance or because of where they live or etc. Because there are details to this um, of obligation of praying in the masjid, right? Um, for example, one of the details I've read, Allahu Alam is that you have to you have to actually hear the other um, for it to be an obligation. Like you have mm. to be at a distance where you can hear it. Now where mm. I live, mm. I can't even you know I wouldn't even be able to see a message, let alone hear the other. End. <laughs> it's it's a long it's far away. Yeah. But I'd like to think Allah judges judges not just me but judges people on the capacity. So that trip to a masjid might mean more to that person, and it might have been more of a hardship on that person than someone who lives next to a masjid and goes every day, and mm-hmm. it's not actually that much of a hardship on them mm-hmm. or a difficulty on them. Because um, if you were to compare the two together, you'd say, well, this person's getting way more reward because he's going, and he may be, he may be. But the mercy that Allah may have on someone who's he's put them in a situation where actually the norm is actually quite difficult for them, mm-hmm. um, and it's, mm-hmm. you get things like. Uh, people that grow the beard, right? Like mm-hmm. some people will grow the beard um, normally, and that's fine, and it's not an issue. Some people grow the beard, same effort in growing a beard. You just don't do anything, and it grows. <laughs> that's but, the great <laughs> thing about it. <laughs> yeah, but the pressure that they might have from, uh, you know, got, yeah, like uh, just me versus family. you, isn't it? I don't have a job. You do have a job. Mm. Simple as that. Mm. You've got a job. No, I mean, I have a business. I don't have to. I do what I want. Oh, kind right, of yeah. Thing. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Poor Sorry. jobs, bro. You've just, you've just thrown me right triggered. into that. Triggered. <laughs> <You> triggered me. <laughs> bro, um, you know, when it comes yeah. to, like, being ready for death, my, my thinking, I don't know if it's right or wrong, but my thinking is that if there is no, like, sin that, you know, I, I'm doing, which is, like, hovering over my head, and I'm like, look, that's a bad sin, and I'm doing yeah. it, and I don't... If I don't have that, and then I'm doing things like uh, praying praying every salah on time, I'm doing some dhikr after salah, maybe, I'm reading Qur'an daily, and I'm not oppressing, you know, anyone around me, dealing with my family and stuff well. Um, I feel like at that point, maybe I would be ready to hmm. die do you um do you have like i don't know if you, i don't know if i'm the only one who does this or sees this but does it ever cross your mind that bad things happen to you because of things that you've done and that in itself is a bit of a mercy so like i'll make a mistake sometimes and <clears throat> less than 24 hours later bro hmm. something will go wrong something will happen yeah. and i'll immediately think back to that mistake i made and then in one way i'm like I need to stop making mistakes because this keeps happening to me. Um, yeah, yeah. But in another way, I'm I'm a bit thankful because the if it is the punishment for whatever I did, mm. then at least it came now and it didn't come. You know, a small part of me is like, at least it came in this life and it didn't come. Of course, that's the, the that's the mercy. You know, that's the mercy. Yeah. I always remember the uh, what Aisha said. You know, she said uh, when when I got a headache. Uh, I used to think, you know, what sin was this for? You know, why did mm-hmm. I get a headache? Yeah. What, what was the sin that caused this headache? So, that's, but that's the blessing of bro. the believer, bro. Yeah. Because and, uh, the believer yeah. gets purified in this life rather than in the afterlife. You get purified think, with a headache rather than Nara yeah. Jahannam. Yeah, I think. Uh, I think some sometimes, and I don't know. Once again, like I think death can be a difficult thing to talk about for a lot of people, um, but to me. It's mm. one of the most liberating things. Mm. Um, it's because it puts. It's almost like you, it's, like I said, that exam thing again. I remember sitting exams before, um, 
and I still remember like the last exam I ever took officially for education. I've mm-hmm. taken exams since, you know, for work or for whatever. But for, for like education, for my uni, I remember the last uni exam I took, bro. And I remember sitting there thinking, this could be my last ever exam mm. after doing God knows how many years of exams. And I remember looking at the clock and saying, okay, at 10 o'clock or whatever it was, that's going to be it. Mm. Like at 10 o'clock, this will, like, it doesn't matter what I've done or how I've done or how well I've done, this will be the last exam I do. And looking at that and knowing that it's coming and knowing that 10 o'clock is almost here yeah. was so liberating, bro. Mm. And, I, and I've applied that kind of thought process to my life in the sense that any moment, no matter how difficult it gets in this dunya, it could just end, mm-hmm. right? And yes, it's sad. And yes, it's, you know, you could, you could leave people behind mm-hmm. and responsibilities behind. Mm. But if you have faith that Allah will take care of, like I said, if you combine it with the thought that Allah will only take you when he's pleased with you and Allah mm. will take care of things after you've gone. Yeah. Um, and that you you should start trying to set things up for after you go. Mm-hmm. Then it's, 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 I find it really liberating, bro. I find it mm. like you 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 kind of come back to reality and what your purpose is and actually no matter how no, nothing can be that bad in the dunya if death is at the end like i don't know if you think mm. like that but no i mean no i stress. think you, you might have a you might have a better opinion of allah than me then in that case because <laughs> because i i guess you know i'm quite i'm quite certain inshallah in my like actual iman right mm. uh, hopefully i have the iman i have that the shahada at least right which is a big Mm. deal right Mm. but i always think when i think of death i think have i done enough good stuff to outweigh the bad stuff in the sense Mm. where like inshallah you know every muslim will go jannah right yeah but it's like spending a few seconds in the fire for these sins that i've done i know that's what i fear you know that's the part not to mention that everyone gets squeezed in the grave and Oh, of course. It, it's quite serious, you know. Yeah. So I, I don't feel I have that level of, you know. Th- those are, mm. those are aspects that do worry, like scare me and worry me. Mm. Um, for example, yeah, like you said, the squeezing of the bra- the grave. Um, also, like, I, there's some detail to this, and I've never really got my head around it. Mm. But like the length of the, the, the Yom Al Qiyamah. Yeah. I know that, you know, there's there's a hadith and and and. And detail regarding how long it is, you know, mm. like, uh, up to fifty thousand years or so. Mm-hmm. But I don't know what that effect has on the believer. You know, mm-hmm. I don't know if the believer senses that differently. Or I remember hearing something about that, but I can't be sure. Mm. But let's just say, let's just uh, for the for the sake of argument, assume that it is that long. Mm. You know, then that's a whole other that's a it whole is. other battle to to, 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 to deal with. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are elements of the afterlife that when when i do remember them um mm. then I, I i worry and i and i get nervous about that mm. um but generally speaking i i think i do lean more towards the hope and mm. the i think if i didn't it would, I'd, I'd really struggle um, of course of course because now i and alhamdulillah like I think we have to ask Allah for balance in our thought processes when it comes mm. to thinking of him. And we have to ask Allah of good thoughts of him. Mm-hmm. Of um, course. Otherwise, you, you know, you'll face troubles. Everything becomes bad. Everything becomes bad news then. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you won't really be able to cope. Yeah. Um, I just pulled up this hadith um, on this topic. Yep. Uh, you know, Aisha narrated that the Prophet ﷺ said, Man ahabba liqa Allah, ahabba ahabba Allahu liqa. Mm. So whoever, oh, what's the translation? Whoever loves to meet Allah, Allah loves to meet him. Mm. And the opposite as well. Whoever hates to meet Allah, um, then Allah will hate to meet him. So, you know, what? it's it's that it's a difference, isn't it? It's a slight difference between death and then meeting Allah. Mm. They, and they come together, but it's different, isn't it? I mean, you have to. I mean, the, the thing is, there's a hadith regarding. Um, you know the people that will be that will that will basically enter gender without any judgment. Mm-hmm. So it's almost like they skip. Allahumma mm. jannah min him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and and that hearing that, and not only just hearing that, but there's also the the, the extra detail regarding like there's a certain number, but then there's like and and more and more and more. Like mm. the number actually isn't limited to what we think the number is. It's 
because I think the detail was that sort of what was it like handfuls from from basically there's an additional there's an additional amount that actually may be much more than what the hadith itself details so I think the hadith may have detailed like I don't know a few thousand maybe mm. 70,000 or 50,000 you'll have to check it again mm. um, but then yeah there was detail about even more than that we'll, mm. we'll be blessed with that sort of opportunity mm. now the fact that that exists like that's an option or, or that is there for mm. certain groups of people gave me so much hope that reading about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy reading about how actually the, the, the amount of people that may get that is still unknown to us it could be a vast amount right yeah. Reading about how like the reward of, of someone who's fasted, for example, is mm-hmm. something that's only Allah knows and mm. it's so so it's to, to that extent it's so grand. And then combining that with what we've spoke about at the beginning, which is you know, even Fara'un, even even Jibra'il was scared that Allah will have mercy on Fara'un. Mm. And all of these mercies on all of these mercies, right? Mm. Um, I wouldn't even be like reading like that, I wouldn't even be surprised if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed most of the Muslim ummah to skip that, right? It mm. just wouldn't surprise me. It may not happen. And mm. Allah, you know, Allah, that's Allah's choice to, to to either allow that to happen or not. But it wouldn't surprise me based on what I've read and what we've learned about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to this, mm. this extent. Yeah, that, basically the, the summary, I think, of this whole topic is don't limit Allah's mercy. Mm. Don't you dare limit Allah's mercy. Mm. It's... Yeah, it's it, it, the fact that you can wake up and have this conversation. The fact that you can wake up every day and and think that just thinking itself, like the thoughts that come into your mind that come out of nowhere, mm. are, are I I've always believed that they're from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The f- the fact that you can have this conversation, like we're having this conversation now, about Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala's mercy is from Him Himself. You know, it's it's a gift to be able to it's a blessing to be able to discuss it. It's a blessing to mm-hmm. be able to be conscious of it. And there's people mm-hmm. that live their whole lives without even fathoming it at all, or it doesn't cross their mind. Mm-hmm. And it's not because they're not actively thinking about it. It may be that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala hasn't blessed them with the thought. Mm-hmm. Like you said, a lot of things happen to you. A lot of thoughts that you have in your mind aren't active. They just it sort of comes out of nowhere. It's injected. It's something that happens in front of you and it reminds you. Or, you know, we've got a lot in our minds that is buried deep and, and, certain things just unlock them you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and a lot of that comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and even even death bro like even being reminded of death is a blessing um, I'd yeah. say you know, I've been thinking probably... about it bro because of the hadith about you know the, the different uh, umam the different nations will gather around you like a you know like mm-hmm. a meal to eat mm-hmm. and you know and then this you know the sahaba they asked him you know what? Uh, you know why? Well, is it because you know we'll be small in number? Then I say no, you'll be big in number, but you'll just be you know pretty worthless, right? Mm. And they said, you know, why is that? And then he said, wahen, because of wahen. He said, what's yeah. wahen? And then he said, it's uh, love of the dunya and fear of death, right? Mm. So that got me thinking. Like, if you want to, if you don't want to be among these these kind of people that. Are causing the ummah to be picked apart, and you want to, you basically you want to be steadfast. Then what's more powerful than hating the dunya and loving death? Mm. You know what's more powerful than that? You know that uh, quote. I can't remember where it comes from, but it's like, what can you do to a man who looks down the barrel of a gun and sees jannah? Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's like, yeah, like what can you do to this person? This person, they might be living comfortably, but it's just the fact that. They have no attachment to dunya. It's like, halas, like I'm, I can meet Allah, no problem. It's very powerful, and I feel like it's. I, I need to work towards that that place. I need to mm. work towards that place because I feel like there's th- so many threats out there, and I also feel isolated. I feel like um, when things get madder than they are now, I won't have like. Islam QA to go to. I won't have shiuch to call up and ask for fatawa. I'm going to have to follow taqwa. I'm going to have to follow my heart. If my, you know, I have to make sure my heart is going to guide me towards the right thing. Mm. Mm. And I just feel like, yeah, things can get very mad very quickly. Mm. Subhanallah. The, 
I lost my train of thought. I was going to say something. Mm-hmm. Well, bro, uh, I had a I had a topic which is linked to what I just said. Oh, okay. I think it'd be a very good <laughs> good segue to the actual main topic. Go for it. So, like I said, I feel isolated, and uh, I've been thinking about this as well, uh, especially since you know getting married, having uh, a child. Um, this idea of having a community. Uh, and I think it's, it's especially relevant. Actually, I, I to be honest with you, I wasn't thinking of it in this sense uh, before, but a friend of mine who, yeah, and he had a bit of a similar up- upbringing to me where at least right now, he doesn't have anywhere he calls home, okay? And he said to me, um, I, need some, I need a community. I need a community, especially for my wife and kids, yeah? Uh, I want my wife to have some good friends. I want my wife to be around good people and have, pe- have things to do with, with people. And I want my kids to be raised with good friends, good, you know? And not just that, but the types of things that community brings, like... Mm like activities like lessons like support support in different areas you know like lessons and all of that so that honestly is what got me thinking about this and since then since that day honestly maybe a couple of years ago i've been thinking deeply about community and how can i get a community how can i live somewhere where there is true community where you know Mm. even if it's the size of five to ten families but it's just those families are on the same wavelength and they can support each other and stuff. You know, have you ever thought of that? Because I don't think you you feel you have a community where you live, isn't it? Yeah, I think I've... Um, there is a community, I'll be honest, there is. And I think I am just not very engaged with it. Um, and I don't know why. I think a lot of that is obviously work and, and responsibilities and maybe distance, um, but it shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. I think if I made more effort, I could be. Um, I think, I think being a bit too picky of what you consider community is probably an issue. Okay, uh, probably an issue that that kind of um, inhibits me a bit. Mm. Uh, like the city I live in is very student focused, so a, a, a large portion of the community is students from abroad, mm. and because of that, they change very frequently. It's kind of like a, yeah. it's kind of like a palm tree that people take shade under and then leave after yeah. a few years, you know. So it's always new faces, and I think because of that can't really get too attached to people Mm. they're quite you know some of them quite young and quite in their own sort of groups and stuff but there are you know old timers and old faces that that have remained ever since um i think i think the way the local community sees me has changed a lot since i since my job right like like I turned up to Jumai the other day and immediately someone runs up to me who's like sort of like security slash manager of the man, you know facilities mm. of the masjid and stuff he just started talking to me about oh there's this issue and this issue and you need to talk to this person because there's this like I've become mm. you know some sort of I don't know I just I just came to pray I've just come to worship on last final time <laughs> you know yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah there's, there's a good there's good deeds and helping in, in that but I hadn't been to the Meshid in a while and I mm. finally made effort to really try and come this time round and immediately it was just like oh I've come to more problems as opposed to worshipping on last planet of Tal, which mm. is fine that you know that needs to be done um, now as far as community and, and, and being somewhere that's even more so you know I've discussed about going moving up to London before because of community because of this element of there's so many good brothers there I benefit a lot when I'm up there my wife would as well there's more Muslim children um, and there's this there's a larger pool of practicing actively practicing Muslims to a level that I'm quite um, impressed with you know mm. which you may not get down here as much you know you've got you've got less to pick and choose from yeah so there's there's been that discussion um, but there's so many different factors that come into that to make that decision to go that mm. I don't really I don't think I've got that luxury to make that choice mm. um, and I think uh once again, I think this we spoke about this a while ago. Uh, there was an episode we did called "The Grass Is Greener." I think that's mm. one, that was one of my favorite ones back in the day. And the, the, it may be that one thing I tell my wife a lot, we talk about a lot, is we're, we're discussing basically making moves and, and doing something big soon, inshallah. Um, mm. But I keep reminding her that no matter what we do, there's always going to be issues. Um, yeah. So let's say you do this community move, right? Mm. Well, Allah's going to test you with that community. You know, mm. that's going to be another responsibility on your head, or there may be someone in that community that is, 
I don't know, a bit deviant or whatever, and is teaching your kids something a bit funny or do you know what I mean? There's always going to be something. Of course, there's yeah. benefits in every situation, and yeah. there's negatives in every situation, yeah. and um, all you can do is is make make changes for the sake of a lost power to Allah. Because mm. only that way will you be rewarded for it. Because once mm. you get there, that's a different story. And it, and and what, another thing is like, um, it's not it's not like the it's not like the happily ever after. And this is when there's when there's things that you think about for a long time, like big changes you want to make for a long long time. You mm. kind of subconsciously start making that like the end of your story. For example, I've had it in my head that I'm going to move to Tunisia um, one day, and I'm thinking really actively about that now. Mm. But because I've thought about that for 26 years of my life, I keep thinking that that's the end goal. Like, yeah, oh, right. once that happens, it's happily ever after. I finally achieved what I needed to do in my life, right? Yeah, yeah. But actually, and this is what me and my wife are talking about, actually, once you get there or once you yeah. start there, that's just the start of another chapter. Yeah. You know, it's not the end of the book, so to speak. Mm, of course. Um, so what, what, what you were saying that you, you might be picky in terms of defining what a community is. What do you mean by that? I think um, so. For example, your idea of community is X, Y, Z. So you want people to help, you know, with I don't know, raising children or community events like classes, lectures, etc., etc., etc. Right? Mm. Um, but your idea of I don't know, maybe a small community is certain types of people that are active in certain things or or whatever, um, or they're of this age group or of they're of this. And I suppose a community is quite varied anyway, and it depends how strong it is. Mm-hmm. I think uh, because down here there's only really one community, if you know what I mean. Whilst maybe in other areas there's different messages, there's different uh, cl- different you know classes going on. There's different there's people of different different opinions. Different. Do you understand what yeah. I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, you can you can pick up from a lot of different communities and, and, and learn quite a lot because yeah. I think down here we're so limited to maybe just one active masjid. Yeah. Um, there isn't much choice. Got it. Um, mm. And not to say that there are, there, there, there are obviously that, you know, there's been things that, that maybe the establishment or organization has done that I haven't agreed with all the time and that's fine. But because there isn't that choice, I, I, I do hesitate to sort of glue myself because what's happened before is I've seen people that have glued themselves to this community um, mm. and basically learn everything they know about Islam from this community right. or from this you know, masjid or whatever right. to the point where if you came to them with a different understanding or a different or maybe something that I consider more valid of an opinion mm-hmm. then it, it, you know, heads kind of stop biting a bit um, yeah I, that, that's I probably that's... the reality of everything though isn't it the, yeah, that's yeah, the reality yeah. of people um like wherever you're going to go, wherever you're going to live, right? UK, yeah. uh, you know, Malaysia, um, whatever, Tunisia. Everyone everyone actually practices Islam and they have a lifestyle based on what's normal there. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so you can't escape that. But I suppose you have to find uh, the community that is kind of 80% aligned with what you're looking for. Um, mm. That's pretty much as good as you can get because people like like you and I, we maybe there there might not be a community that's like us a hundred percent at all because we have so yeah. many different influences. Mm. Whereas when you have like the uh, a mono culture, you know, so like yeah. in Algeria, pretty much everyone in that town or city is pretty much more or less gonna have the similar lifestyle, similar beliefs, similar yeah, this and yeah, that, yeah. you know. So that's something that I think it's a gift and a curse. I think both. You know, I think this the gift, I mean, yeah. the gift is that, the gift of, for example, not having somewhere you call home, and then being from different countries, different citizenships, but then you live in a different country and you've never had somewhere that you're like stable in. And I think the gift of that for me has been I'm very comfortable with being weird. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I've been weird most of my life, so that's a yeah. good thing. The bad thing is, you know, sometimes you just. You just want to um, take shortcuts. You just want to follow the tradition, follow the culture. You know, it's yeah. very tiring to th- think about everything, like make decisions about everything. For example, yeah, um, when my son was born, you want to do aqiqah, yeah? Right. How do you do aqiqah, yeah? Mm. There's going to, or, or a wedding, for example. What's the, what's the marriage process? These are things that cultures have defined and people just yeah. follow the path. 
Yeah, they just yeah. follow the path. Very simple. But someone like me, I have to decide how exactly am I going to do this yeah, process I, because I, yeah. I have multiple inputs rather than one input from one society. Yeah. I fully, fully agree with you there. Like I sympathise with that completely. Mm-hmm. Um, it reminds me of, you know, like for example, circumcision, right, for kids. Yeah. Right. Like I remember when the topic came up for my first son and mm. you know from my understanding of it like you just get it done from my dad who's talked about it he's like oh no no you have to wait at least a few years like you should wait a few years but then mm. for my wife's family mm. they're like no it has to be done as soon as possible kind of mm. thing yeah and then i was just like what am i doing <laughs> mm-hmm. um and then there's, there's things that come with that so like you can't do that without having a party uh, mm. and you can't do that without going back home and having a party about it and all this sort of, sort of stuff. Mm. But I say back home, like back to Tunisia or whatever. Um, mm. And also stuff with weddings and stuff with anything, anything really. Um, and then there's stuff that they celebrated that we don't do at all. For example, mm. I don't know, like Molid, for example, they'll cook certain mm. things in Molid and eat certain things and yeah. I don't know, do certain things. I'm like, oh, that's not me. I've never done yeah. that. I've never yeah. been about that. But then they'll, t- they'll be like, well, you're meant to be the religious one, so how can you not do this kind of thing? <laughs> Yeah, yeah right. and um, you just seem weird. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think we'll always have that. And now, like, even now we're talking about moving to Tunisia and stuff. Um, it's like accepting that even when you go there, you're never going to be seen as one of the people because you're never going to practice your dean like one of the people there do. Mm. Um, especially where we live, it's just not. Yeah. But at the mm. same time, there's simplicity in that, and there's solitude in that, and the fact that once again there's pros and pros and cons the fact that I can walk down the street and say salam alaikum to someone and they will say salam alaikum salam back mm. that means the world to me bro yeah. Um, yeah because I think I'm a bit burnt out on this society and I'm mm. a bit burnt out on being in solitude here as opposed to maybe being in solitude in a Muslim country or surrounded mm-hmm. by Muslims you know? yeah yeah you know um you were saying, you know, sometimes you think of, you know, oh, moving to, to, to Tunisia, that's the objective and that's like the end goal, right? Yeah. Um, I think, obviously, you said, you know, that's probably, that's not really accurate way or a good way of thinking of things. Um, one of the end goals that I, I have is to live somewhere with a community. And maybe the reason I have this, bro, so much is because I've never had one. You know, yeah. I've never had one, man. Like, even... Um, the small chance I had maybe to get involved in something that I would call a community. For example, when I was, um, I was doing masters in, in London and there's right. an ISOC, you know, so I yeah, could have exactly, got heavily yeah. involved in that. I could have gone to the events. I could have started helping out organizing events and all of this stuff. Um, but I was so busy, you know, masters in the UK is crazy, you know, cause in many countries they do masters in two years, but in the UK it's one year. And it's very right. intense. So I ended up going to maybe one or two ISOC events in the whole year. And yeah. that was it. And I was done, you know. So that was like one of my only chances. Then And then growing up in the UAE, it's like th- there is no such thing like that. For whatever reason, you know, some people I've talked to, they said, oh, I think it's because most people come here for a few years to make some money and they're leaving. So yeah. they're not looking to commit and establish and invest uh, in, in living here. Um, yeah. The other reason is because, so the one reason is they're not looking to like commit and invest in a place. The other reason is people come in and out. And when people come in and out, you don't have those old timers, the, the bedrock of the community. Yeah. And then on top of that, like you're not really allowed religious or any gatherings where there could be religious talk, political mm. talk. That's not really allowed. So I think definitely there are communities here, by the way. Um, but I just feel it's more difficult maybe especially where i live maybe in i can imagine if you live in like sharjah and you're indian then yeah it's, it's maybe a bit of a different story but regardless of of where i've lived and stuff i just i crave it but now on an emotional level perhaps even though i'm i'm not such a maybe completely social person but now on a very very rational and logical re, uh, like way of thinking i i now i want it and i crave it because i realize I need my wife and kids to have f- good friends. That's yeah. absolutely essential. Yeah. Um, and uh, like, I'm just set on that now. And so yeah. it's not about which country, it's about whatever country can give me that um, and obviously find a community where we're more or less aligned on most things. That's where I need to find a way of getting there, you know? And I'm yeah. sure there's probably multiple places that has that, uh, but I just, I need it, right? Um, because 
I mean, my, my wife needs friends, of course. And of course. Um, and my wife needs, uh, for example, when you have, when a woman has friends, maybe she can share some of the hardships of, of raising children with those friends. She can share Pretty, some yeah. of the homeschooling stuff if that's the route you want to go down. Not even, even putting homeschool aside, just the general help you give your kids at school by having those good friends um, then there's help with that. Um, there's help when it comes to uh, finding friends for your kids, you know. So, you know, if I find friends, then uh, they will have wives and then my friends, my wife can meet their wife and my kids mm -hmm. can meet their. And then it all comes together, right? This um, is it. And I, that's, mean, the I think that's an enriching upbringing. That's what I'm trying to have for my kids is an enriching upbringing where they're doing activities with good, like-minded people. They are they're learning with you know like-minded people. They're getting the good character from mixing with good people. Even if I think honestly, it, inshallah, it's possible with you know just five to ten families who are kind of on the same wavelength. Yeah, so, the dean was established on community, bro, and yeah, something you can't. You know, you can't. Bro, humanity was established on community. Of course, of course. And yeah. now, like, you know, we've had our second child, right? Yeah. And it has been, you know, very difficult mm. because, you know, Suleiman is, is about two and a half and he's very active and very loud and very whatever. Mm. And then you've got a newborn that you can't leave alone yeah. with him. You can't, like, walk off or... Mm. Um, I'm getting a text already because because it's getting a bit difficult for her, you know, mm. on her own sort of thing. Yeah. Um, as I was saying that, I got a message, but yeah, so you can't, <laughs> you can't, um, basically can't not be there. You always have to, but it's so tiring, bro. And it is. Yeah. Like I've had it, I've had it where I'm on my own with mm. them, just for you know, just for an hour or two, and mm. I'm running, like I'm literally running, bro. Like okay, he's. I fed one of them. The other one started crying. Okay, I need to run. I need to run to the kitchen and get him um, his milk sorted or whatever. But I have to do it so quickly that the other one doesn't run up to him, or I have to drag one of them with me. And I can't go to the toilet because I can't leave them together. So I have to yeah. lock one somewhere while I go to the toilet. And I've come, I've come back briefly, and I've seen Suleiman attempt to pick up um, the, the the little one, Ilyas. And I'm like, oh my god, no! Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's just yeah. like that's like 30 minutes or an hour, yeah, bro. And yeah. that's imagine that all the time. And yeah, yeah, you know, it's not the same issue for everyone because people have different, you know, kids at different ages and stuff. But yeah. this situation we're in has mm. really made us value that this should have this kind of lifestyle it was well adapted for a community because it was communities that raised children. It was it wasn't yeah. like always going to be yourself. Mm. And even you like know, they, they say it takes a village to raise a child. Exactly, bro. And that's what it should, you know, that's what it should be. But when you're, you know, when you're isolated like this, when you're in an area mm. like this, and you haven't even got the culture of kids playing outside here, like you yeah, do I noticed in that maybe some time. more rural areas or whatever, you know. Because um, I, you know, they, I, I get spoken to by my grand and stuff who, who talk about Tunisia and how Tunisia, where we live in Tunisia is quite rural, but how mm. it used to be at least 50 years ago, where all these walls that we're seeing between houses didn't used to exist. Yeah. So now there's like there's walls and stuff, and everything's walled off, and everyone's got their land. But apparently before there wasn't. You could literally see to everybody's door. Yeah. Um, you know, it was a big sort of village area. So kids were just running around this whole area, and there was always someone who was looking at them or see, you know, look, looking yeah. at them or or conscious of their. And if something bad had happened, kids would scream and everyone would hear it. Yeah, you know? exactly. So that, that was sort of normal. But here now you haven't got that luxury, and there's yeah. a lot more fear pumping. Yeah. Whether yeah. Whether that's because of the reality of things mm. that are happening, mm. or whether that's probably um, exaggerated to be honest. exaggerations as well and, and, and stuff like that. So you're like, you, you know, everything is like helicopter parenting, bro. You can't yeah. let them eat this. You can't let them watch mm. this. Mm. Um, when they're outside, you got to keep them close. You can't let them run yeah. down the street. Like right now, we're trying to train my son to walk. Um, yeah. Not not they can't walk, but like walking when we're outside because she can't. I can't like if I'm out with both of them. It's difficult to pick one up and then sort of chase the other one. Unless I'm going to put a leash on him, which I don't like the idea of. Yeah. Which some pe parents resort to doing that. They put like that leash on the back. Yeah. Um, so it's all these sort of things, bro. Mm. But like I said, community, bro, community solves a lot of that because mm. people help each other out. Yeah. Um, yeah. And you'll so, see that yourself in short life. You have another child, bro. Um, you'll see the, the, the dynamic completely change. Yeah, I can I can imagine, man. It's 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 kind of crazy, and but it's like what you're saying. 
we were not kind of designed, if you like, to live like this in this secluded, isolated kind of way. Um, yeah. And I, I think there are certain things, it, you know, basically, what is one decision I can make to solve 100 problems? Yeah. Yeah. And I think sometimes there are there are answers to that. There are ways you can make one decision to solve 100 problems. One of them <laughs> is living somewhere where there are a set of families where you, you have the same kind of values generally. And for example, uh, living somewhere where I know my kids can play outside. That, yeah. those two things, yeah? Some, some good families who have kids and then the fact that it's kind of safe to play outside. Th- those two things I feel um, parenting wise, upbringing wise, that's like, I don't know what number to put on it. That might be 50% of raising good kids is done right yeah. there. You know? yeah, yeah, so yeah. it's kind of worth putting in the effort to find out how it can be done. Yeah, um, yeah. But there's there's pockets of community everywhere. I think of course, that's something. Yeah. Like you know, you even look at. I don't know how much of this is just like uh, social media and giving you this sort of element of the fear of missing out and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But you know, I've you know sometimes I I watch videos of Muslims in Australia um, and and they're quite they appear to have this really deep community and lots going on yeah. or there's areas in London for example whether that's like mm. uh, you know areas surrounding East London Masjid or other mm. Masjid they have very strong communities um, people that work together and organisations that work together a lot uh, trying to think more uh, even like in UAE like have you I'm sure you've seen like Kelima for example yeah no Kelima like mm. I feel like there's a good decent community surrounding mm. that because of the mm. amount of children that are there there must be mm. the amount of children that attend those classes and attend mm. those like you kind of see their heads in the YouTube videos yeah, like yeah. oh subhanAllah there's so many kids there yeah. uh, and they look like a lot of kids that are from even English speaking families because mm. they all speak English and stuff yeah, there yeah. must be a community behind that that that, that makes that happen mm. kind of thing yeah. up in Birmingham as well Green Lane Meshit mm. like these, no, these I are think, hubs bro, in the UK there is that yeah, you know, I think there is not in every city, but there definitely no. is, bro. Like, and I've experienced it because I used to live right behind East London Masjid. Yeah, right. I used to pray there, and it became a level where, like, every few salah that I go, I'm gonna see someone I know. Right. Yeah, and I, yeah. of course, I was not at the age where like I have wife, I have kids, and like, or maybe our wives should meet up. Obviously, I wasn't at yeah. that age, and the people I knew were also young, so. That wasn't the case, but I can imagine for sure that um, if I was in London, if I was uh, re- really in any uh, medium-sized city in the UK where there's Muslims, yeah. I-, I can see that happening. Um, when it comes to Kelima, I-, I only been to a few of the events over there, right? Uh, yeah. A friend of mine who actually lives in Dubai, he went to many more than me, and he told me that he actually still struggled to find people who were bothered. Like He's like, most oh, really? people, they're just going to work and maybe this is a problem worldwide. He's like, they're just going to work weekend. They're just with family. And they're not really interested in like meeting people, having friends for their kids. Yeah. They're not really interested. He, he's the one actually that said maybe it's that reason. You know, people are just here for a few years and they're gone. So they're not that bothered. I don't know what it is. I do think, though, a big reason that I'm struggling is, A, I don't have kids in school because school is a large place that you meet yep. people. And also, I don't, I don't go to a workplace and have colleagues, right? This is it, yeah. So and I think part of that, together. part of that as well. I mean, and I don't know if it's correct me thinking, but it's just my assumption. Is I'm assuming you spend, for example, more time at home than the average office worker. Hundred <laughs> percent, yeah. Right, and I think because of that, mm. you have the not the luxury, but the blessing of being able to kind of be like, okay, I've spent enough time with my family what else can I provide for them, right? Mm. Whilst maybe someone who is away from their family a lot yeah. because of work most of the time, the last thing they want to do is be involved with someone else when they should be with their family. So, for example, something that hits me a lot is like, for example, yesterday. So I, I, I had this issue with work and I and whatever, and then I'm spending time with my family, and then I get a message because somebody, mm. um, one of the stairs from London has come down to Brian, mm. right? He messages me. He calls me actually, and then he messages me because I didn't pick up. And he said, oh, "I'm in Brighton. Uh, I'm doing an event here. Do you want to come and meet me?" Kind of thing. And I was like, "Ah, oh, I would, mm. but I've got no interest in doing anything social at the moment mm. because I want to be with my family because I haven't been with them for a while, right?" right? Yeah. And that's what kind of happened. So I think a lot of people maybe they get burnt out at work. They haven't seen their family in a while. And they've only got a few hours 
kind of, you know, to spend with their family. And they yeah. feel like they owe their family something over their attention. Sure, spend yeah. that time away from them. Mm. Again, doing mm. something community focused or being away mm. from them or whatever yeah. is where the difficulty lies mm. because then you're never at home. Yeah. You know? My thinking, th- bro, is that let's say you're at work eight, nine hours a day, right? Yeah. What is your wife doing? Assuming your wife's at home, she's a housewife. Of course, yeah. Couldn't, couldn't her time, couldn't that time be more enriching for her if she had friends coming over, exactly, friends, yeah, kids yeah. coming? That's what, that's what I'm thinking about. I'm mostly thinking yeah, about definitely. wife and kids. I'm not really yeah, thinking about yeah, myself. Yeah. But I do yeah. understand that me making the link to other people is a way for my wife and kids to get the community. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That's mo- mostly what I'm thinking of. I think that, that, I think a lot of it has to be things that are happening for women already as well because I've I've tried the approach of oh let's have our wives meet up kind of thing and yeah. it's always a bit forced you know of course, it's fine with each other but it doesn't it's mm. not as lasting as it is natural sort of selection sort of thing yeah um, so yeah in a community where things are happening for women all the time uh, yeah that's you know mm. I think even the Masjid locally has done something mm. like that where they did uh, like a, a mother's sort of meet up kind of thing yeah um, this stuff should be basic man exactly this stuff shouldn't have to have an event it should be natural and that's the thing that we're missing because when we artificially make it like artificially set events or whatever mm. it's all forced it all mm. seems quite forced mm. but if it's naturally like these things are happening all the time mm. oh yeah there's a there's a tea shop down the road or a coffee shop down the road oh yeah there's loads of muslim mothers that go there mm. you know what i mean but that's a bit more yeah. oh yeah even yeah. i'm not against the events thing i'm just saying every masjid should have like um, I don't know, maybe there is, but every masjid should have at least once a week some kind of uh, ladies halaqa. And mm-hmm. this is where if you have like 20, 20 uh, ladies coming to that, then you, they're not all going to get along. But, you know, yeah, of five of them will get along with each other and then another five will get along. With each- That's how it would work, right? But yeah. sometimes I feel like if the messenger is not going to organize that, you can kind of start it yourself by having a halaqa in your house, right? And you invite one person and then you meet another you- and then it becomes three, four people and yeah. it could can kind of grow from there. Yeah, and it's reinvigorating the, as the, well. The bro. house as well is like, and, and you know, there's a problems with masjid. You know, raising money to build a masjid, buy the land, and uh, this and that. We don't have community centers for Muslims. We just have these masjid. There's no space. There's no women's area. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I feel like, like, especially in in Arab culture, you f- you see the house as the woman's place. And the right. woman could do whatever she wants in that house. Like she, of course, she can invite people. Like it's her area. Like be, yeah, because yeah. she's not like going out so much. It's like that's her area. Like she is fully welcome and able to invite people over. And because of those people over, the man doesn't come home. Like the man's got to find somewhere else to go because yeah. he's not going to invade on her having something in her house. Like that's her space. You know what I mean? Yeah. Definitely. Whereas he has the whole world where he could go out and be. So yeah. you know. And and I think that that's kind of how community works. Like if you if you imagine, yeah, you talk about a village in Tunisia, I'm sure that's how it is. They, they don't have a building where they're going to go. Oh, they don't have a coffee shop yeah, where yeah, they're yeah. going to go. They do. Yeah, like our house, yeah. our house in Tunisia is quite large, and you know, my auntie who predominantly lives there the most, not my mum, but my mm. auntie, um, she she's got friends coming all day, like all mm. the time. Mm. Um, to the point like my dad's always out and then if my dad comes in he mm. just walks straight down the side of the house bro straight mm. to his bedroom yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean because they're all sitting at the front so he kind of hello and goes yeah. and that's fine that's accepted and that's normal that's not an mm. issue mm. Um, so that's yeah you're right that is that is the mm. alternative for, yeah. for women I think they're more comfortable that way but also it kind of if it's not done correctly and and, and it's not monitored then it, 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 it does unfortunately with any gathering it can become non-beneficial and it can become like oh let's talk about other people and talk about <laughs> yeah, you know what i mean but, and that's the other yeah. that's the dark side of community the dark side of community is 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 oh did you hear mm. about so and so and did you yeah. hear about, because right now you might not have that mm. you might not have that issue yeah um, i understand you, that yeah and, and you won't fall into that yeah. issue either but, but that's why bro anyone. that's why bro if you look at for example the 40 hadith of imam and um mm. How many of those are about, you know, like in fiqh, you have ibadat and you have mu'amalat. Yeah, you have the, yeah. the actual worship, for, uh, acts of worship, and you have the uh, stuff that governs, the rulings that govern transactions and relationships. Yeah. If you mm. look at uh, those 40 hadith of Imam Nawawi, which he compiled to try and summarize Islam, what all that Islam is about, the essence of Islam, how many of those hadith are about dealing with other people? 
yeah. more than half. You know, I, I, I don't have the number, but I would, it's like 30 or 25 of them are just about dealing with other people. And yeah. so our, our deen is built so that you spend time with other people and you're supposed to have the taqwa to treat people properly, you know, not, yeah. not to backbite and all of that. So I agree, bro. Of course, the negatives will come with it, but uh, it's unavoidable, this stuff, because you can see the problems that are coming from isolation and um, what's the word? Invi- individualism. Um, I just yeah. I finished that book called Lost Connections. It's like the real the real causes for depression. And one of them, of course, is loneliness. You know, one of them, of course, is loneliness. Uh, when you think as well of the last episode we did about marriage, uh, you know, Kaya finding someone uh, on Muzmatch. Yeah. Why is it that people are struggling to find someone to get married to? It's because they don't have these connections. You know, yeah. they can't just tell their mom or dad or whatever. Yeah, like I'm ready or even the, without even having to ask for it. It's like, yeah, OK, I've got my eye on X, Y, Z person for you. Yeah, because yeah. they're going to know people. And yeah. When you're connected with people as well, you see, you see people's behavior, you see their conduct, and you kind of know their values, and you kind of know, you know, marriage-wise, even jobs, bro, business relationships. Yeah, this is all how it begins, you know. Um, yeah. and, but that's why as well, you got to find people with the, you know, with the same values, same values as you, uh, and you might have a community and then a sub community, you know, of people who you're really close to. Um, mm. But yeah, there's also the hadith of Prophet Sallam. Of course, I'm par- paraphrasing and translating at the same time, yeah? <laughs> um, <laughs> but the, the one who engages with the people and the difficulties that mixing with people brings, he is more beloved to Allah than the one who like, yeah, just purely right. secludes himself. You know? yeah. And again, this is one that hits me <laughs> right in the chest because yeah. I am that uh, like, isolated person. So, yeah. so, you know, that's life, man. I suppose it's difficult. Maybe these, maybe in, in generations to come, it'll be a bit more different. But as long as we're so tied to where we come from and our heritage and stuff, mm. um, people don't mix too much. Like for example, like I go to gatherings where predominantly Afghan um, oriented, but there's also pockets of Pakistani, pockets of uh, other countries around the world. You know that that attend these yeah. gatherings, and you can see how the dominant the Afghan culture is in the, in the conversations and stuff. Mm. Um, but it's I You're like feeling to see left fact- out, bro. <laughs> what I'm saying is I like to see that you know in their in their parents, so their parents yeah. do similar things, but their parents are all Afghan, mm, right? Yeah. And now us, we're this next generation. We're kind of mixing it up a bit, and yeah. it'll be interesting to see our kids. Yeah, will yeah. they if they're so detached? At least if they're in this country, and if they're established themselves in this country, and this is it for them, mm. would their previous sort of uh, cultures and stuff influence them that much? Mm. Will and will the community be a bit more? Um, I don't know, uh, interchangeable when when our ties to these mm. cultures that we've come from are kind of we washed should. away a bit more. Yeah, and, I guess you you form uh, what is a British Muslim culture, isn't mm. it? Uh, and that's but, already happening. Yeah, that's already yeah, happening, exactly. But, definitely. I mean, but, um, I I I was just uh, saying to someone, I am meeting quite a few people now. Like when I was in the UK, for example. Uh, people who are originally from Pakistan, for example, they speak yeah. no Urdu, no Punjabi, no Kashmiri. You know, they don't yeah. they don't speak the language whatsoever. So, no doubt, in your know, third, fourth generation, that connection's kind of gone. And then, yeah. you know, but what you need to develop is a good British Muslim culture, like that's actually yeah. based on Islamic kind of values and 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 uh, uh, what's the word, um, you know, akhlaq and stuff. So, Definitely. so that's the, that's what needs to happen now because. With globalization, these things will happen, but the question is, what will the values of that culture be? Because culture is uh, unavoidable; it's something that humans come together and they create norms. But will yeah. those norms be Islamic or not? You know. Hmm. But myself, yeah, you know, I find I find myself values-wise, um, what is expected? You know, the norms, basically, the culture. I find myself leaning way more towards Arabs. Yeah. But yeah. for me, that's normal. For me, that's like I, that's good. I'm comfortable with the, with the, the culture and the values. But uh, the the barrier I have though is that my Arabic language is not as good as my English, right? Yeah. So yeah, it's like I'm, I've got I've got a big conflict there because if I want to mix with those people and I feel like aligned to their values, then I just I need the Arabic. Otherwise, I'm always going to end up with English speakers who are not going to have those values that I'm most comfortable with, right? So. Uh, that's something I'm gonna have to work out. Yeah. And it's always the risk of like your kids being more alienated than even you are, because mm. uh, you know if I look back at my 
parents they're, they're kind of set in stone in, in who they are or where they came from sort of thing hmm. like my dad is Tunisian bro that's just a reality you know there's no yeah, yeah he spent a lot of his life in the UK but hmm. he he's, hmm. no one looks at him different over the, in Tunisia yeah. because he's Tunisian well your dad's first um, generation isn't it so, yeah, yeah and, and this is it and if I'm not cemented in what I am and know who I am hmm. then how are my kids gonna well yeah it? yeah I mean the good thing for you is you know your wife's also North African and so you you have that kind of thing but then it's like is, you're yeah. also both British right so yeah, it is course. a bit tricky but at the same time like this is part of the reason why um the wisdom why marrying who I did and, and why I had that thought process is because it, I needed an element of stability and an element for of real. understanding for real yeah you know? and I don't think people people you know we spoke about this before but people kind of romanticize the whole nothing wrong with it like marrying from completely different cultures and whatever yeah um but things can get lost in the source a bit 100 <laughs> percent. Um, if you're not really on the same page with certain things yeah 100 percent. and that that's what yeah that's what i'm thinking is that no matter where i live i can raise my kids telling them you're algerian you know what yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. like yeah. I, so there is that stability like you're saying like you can um you can be different in many areas of your life you can you know not 100 percent follow the traditions of xyz but you need some stability yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. that stability that allows you then to experiment with other parts, if you if you like. Definitely. So yeah, the the last thing I've written down actually, bro, is community is what I think uh, should or can be the biggest source of role models for children, right? Oh, for real. Rather yeah. than rather than you know looking up to X Y Z, you know, even if it's you know. Islamic uh, role models, Muslim role models, these are very abstract figures that you only see one side of, right? Yeah. Um, but but somebody who you see in the masjid, you know, Ammu this, uncle that, that's a real person. You know, someone you could yeah, spend definitely. time with. It's someone who's, whose behavior in every different scenario you can see and you can learn from. Yeah. And yeah. this goes for the argument that many people make, which is we need more Muslim women role models, yeah? I I say yes. I say I agree. But what I, what I'm what I say is those need to be organically coming out of the community of people that you mix with who are, have the same same values as you, right? Mm -hmm. They don't need to be the ones on YouTube in in the you know in the big time in the whatever you want to call it in the limelight. They don't. And even, same goes. I'm saying the same for men and women. Like I don't see. I don't know what benefit it gives me to say. Uh, I don't know. Like. Mufti is my role model. Like, yes, yeah. I get, I get some, I get some wisdom from him. Uh, I get some knowledge from him. But in terms of like his day in day out behavior and conduct, like I can't see that, and so yeah. it almost becomes fake because Mufti, I'm sure, must get angry. Mufti must say this and this and that, yeah. and he has different moods and all of that. But I can't see that. And I, in order to have a real role model and, and someone who you can mimic in certain ways, it needs to be realistic, right? You need to yeah. say, okay, so. He, this this man that I'm looking up to in my community as a young man, like I see him, I respect him, and I see that oh, but he's got an anger problem or he's got this kind of problem, and it yeah. it just it humanizes it and all of that. So I think that should be uh, another. It's another great any uh, benefit of, of community as long as the community you're mixing with has like those right values, you know. I think that's why podcasts sort of took off a bit more because it gave you a bit of an insight into these figures and and how mm. they are away from giving a lecture yeah. or do you know what I mean and getting a yeah. deep understanding of the way they live yeah. their lives yeah, yeah. Um, which is quite fascinating really mm. and, and even me and you like we have many other angles to our personality than what we kind of uh, show on this podcast I think we're quite real in the podcast but yeah. you know I noticed yeah when I was recording the episode with Kaya last week yeah I'm with Kaya for, I'd been with Kaya for a few hours that day already and then when I press record, I kind of got into this like interview mode, yeah. <laughs> so, you know. I, I think maybe because you did it on video as well. Yeah, I watched that, that that's on true. YouTube. That's yeah. true, hundred percent. There's an element of video that because right now, bro, if I had a video on me now, bro, it would not be impressive. <laughs> um, but yeah, have the. I think you know, for us, I think maybe we forget a lot. I forget a lot that we've even got listeners, bro, because. Mm. Um, not because I don't want to dismiss any of them. Oh, that reminds me, bro. Mm. Shout out to one of the listeners, bro. Sent me Rashid. Sent me some, yeah. Sent me some stuff for 
I don't know if he wanted his name to be mentioned, to be honest, but you know, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. he sent me some stuff for the boys. Um, yeah, I really appreciated that. Uh, may Allah bless him and everyone who made that out of him. And that's not, I'm not that's not a cry for more people to send stuff to us. I'm not. Mm. That's not what I'm trying to say. Um, but I had to mention that. I had to sh- mm. give him a shout out. Mm. But yeah, um, we. I think we. I find it easy to just forget and have a conversation with you. I know uh, as well because we don't. We really rarely talk unless we're on the podcast. Yeah. Um, especially with the flipping, you can't even do whatsapp calls on, <laughs> yeah. on where you are yeah. <laughs> so otherwise i'd be talking to you all the time but yeah this is our only way of doing it so i have to sit at a computer to talk to you and i might as well if i'm going to do that i might as well record an episode <laughs> yeah yeah for sure alhamdulillah man uh alhamdulillah I think, um yeah i was gonna say uh i think that the time is a running knife for me i have to uh i have to escape yeah shortly. perfect timing i was gonna say the same um, <laughs> i was gonna say the same honestly it's a good good uh, good episode length alhamdulillah and uh, yeah, if if you want to send uh, Muhammad a uh, Zoom H1 mic, then you know I know that would go down well as well. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> we're doing okay. We're doing yeah. okay. And uh, honestly, like, like we've got me. mic. Hamdul, we got. Uh, I got mic. You got a mic. It's just uh, because you're using that different mic, the volume comes out a bit different. So yeah, that, yeah, that yeah. would be the only reason. Anyway, anyway, uh, Hamdul, good episode. I mean, yeah, we're we're in this journey of trying to find community and. You know, we understand the importance. Maybe, bro, uh, in a few, in next episode or after that, we could talk about this this book that I found quite fascinating around the causes for depression. You know, because one of them is like a sense of community and belonging and loneliness okay. and stuff. So that'll be interesting. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, thanks, bro, for a good episode. Um, like a as we sign out, we just got to say any feedback, questions, suggestions. Um, please go to mindheistpodcast.com. You can ask your question uh, via email um, or anonymously on uh, Curious Cat. The links are all there. The links for Instagram are there as well. And uh, yeah, of course, go back to an old episode if you haven't listened to all of them and uh, check those out. And, and if something, you know, really, you really enjoy an episode, then please do share it. You know, that would really help. Uh, anything to add? Um to wrap up the sentiments that we've discussed today mm. I think uh, whether you're making any moves big moves um, whether you're thinking about death and how much you're I mean it's all intertwined really everything we spoke about is kind of intertwined I think ultimately I'd like to end it with saying that as long as you have you'll have sincerity so what, what you sort of said about having these sins that are hanging over your head that you know mm. you can get rid of you can get rid of those you have sincerity in your dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and hope that he will guide you to what's good, then I think everything should fall into place. Mm. So mm. get rid of the thing that is really, you know that you shouldn't be doing, Yeah. whether that's one thing or a few things. Mm. Keep that conversation flowing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so constantly speaking to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, asking him for guidance. Mm. And be sincere in your actions and in, the, and in your worship. You know, mm. Do what you know is, is, is the right thing to do. Mm-hmm. You know, even if you're making even if somewhere down the line you find out that oh you were mistaken in this certain I don't know act of a bed or whatever you know as long as you're sincere along that journey be mm. in the and ask Allah for guidance Allah will guide you to what's best for you mm. and have good opinions of Allah exactly exactly bro very very well said bro Jazakallah khairan okay <laughs> that, that was the Mind House episode uh, Mind House podcast episode 65 Subhanak Allahumma wa bihamdika shadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh see you next episode inshallah